The, fo the following is a presentation of TFNN. Trade what you see with Larry Pesavento. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. Larry Pesavento. Okay, looking good, Billy Ray. Feeling good, Lewis. We have Tim Bost on today at 9.30. And tomorrow we have the mystery guest from uh, Naples, Florida. Oh, I might have given it away. Norm Winsky calls it to the minute. We'll be with us uh, tomorrow. We've got the full moon coming in here on the 17th. What we need to do now is to take a look at this DAX. You can see we're really in a place where we could go either way. Uh, the longer term, of course is uh, negative. The shorter term is actually uh, a little bit more powerful. So uh, keep a close eye on it. It could go either way. That's the main thing that we're trying to focus on today. A lot of things happening, folks, in the corn market. Of course, we had the, uh, the crop report, and it was a real stunner. I just want to give you a, a few heads up of what it really looks like. Here is the uh, this is what, uh, you'll, let me just bring this up so you can take a quick look at it. This is from the uh, Ag Resources that, that uh, does a lot of research. You'll notice this is where we see that red zone there. You know, over the last uh, 30 years, you know, we've only been in that zone about three or four times. What we need to do is if you want to just research some of this, just go into your monthly charts like we're going to right now, and we're going to take a look here uh, at the corn and going back to, you know, 30 32 years, 1987, but you'll see that year of 1996, which was a key year. The corn went up four times in price. Uh, you'll see another one was in 2004 or five, I believe it had a big run. But look at what's happened here. We've been following this on a long-term basis quite some, quite some time here in the corn because we've had this 135 higher bottom pattern. And uh, that was the uh, work of uh, Roy Longstreet and his uh, son, Bill. It's broken out of the monthly charts now over the last four years. Folks, the price objective on this is $6. Uh, that could really be easy to make in corn if this uh, weather stuff and planting problems, uh, you know, keep causing problems. And we're starting to see it in some of the uh, other grains, too. That's uh, another one that makes us, uh, you know, really wondering whether – we're going to have a, uh, you know, bull markets and everything. We had a nice run in wheat yesterday, and we had a nice run in um, uh, soybeans also. So both of those were really starting to act, you know, uh, relatively uh, nicely, which is, uh, is a good sign when you're looking at the grain markets as a whole. And part of this could be related, and I'm not saying that it is, but it could be related to this uh, chart that's getting an awful lot of play on the Internet and that's the one that we showed you from Dennis Gartman a few weeks ago. This is from David Wilson at Bloomberg. And we've just made a new low, again, in the commodity index. Uh, but look at this, folks. You've got a giant ABCD pattern forming here. Uh, boy, it's just saying, please buy me. You can see the uh, head and shoulders pattern uh, that was formed from, t from 1974 to 1990. And then the high was in uh, 2008. And here's where we are now with a big ABCD pattern. So many of these commodities are getting ready to uh, at least go higher, at least for some type of a bounce. That's, uh, that's what it looks like longer term. I can't say anything more than that, but that's it. Now, one of the things that Mr. Z and uh, I think Ruby and some of the other folks here in the Tiger Den yesterday was talking about was the old red metal, copper, Dr. Copper. And if you take a look at this, we had a three drive to a bottom pattern. Uh, copper this morning is setting on a retracement from 270 down to 264, uh, right at the 61% retracements, also the 78% retracement on the longer-term chart. Uh, this is a low-risk trade. If you want to be looking to buy copper and you think it's going to go higher, this is about as, as good as it gets, I think. That would be the main thing to see that's right. Uh, Peak is telling us that, that we're in a massive bull market in silver. Uh, we certainly could. Uh, all we need the silver to do is to get about 1550, and I think that, that you will be. I've been saying all along, anytime you see silver around $14 an ounce, 
uh, to buy those uh, silver rounds, you know, those beautiful coins with uh, the St. Gaudens picture on them, minted by the U.S. Or other other mints make them also, but it's a great way to own silver. That's a one-ounce silver bar. Every coin dealer in the world knows exactly what they're worth. They're easily assayed. All you have to do is take one silver coin and tap it with another, and it shows you that it is 90% silver. Very simple uh, thing to do that they've been using this for hundreds, well, thousands of years uh, over in the Middle East and how they assay you know, gold and silver. They just tap one metal with the other, and it gives them an idea of what's going to, uh, what's going to be looking at these things as we, uh, as we go through. Now, we have a, um, a real interesting thing that happened in the uh, S&P last night, folks. I think it's... Uh, we ought to spend just a moment uh, uh, talking about it here because I think it's important enough to uh, to really take a look at it. Let's just get this up here so we can see it here. Last night, uh, we made a, a really nice uh, 382 retracement from the low on June the 3rd. You remember that big low that we had when the when we hit 2728? That was an exact 382 last night at uh, 28. 68 and we rallied up to a 50 a 61 percent retracement last night so this is going to be key be the key if we break below that 2868 now that's a really negative thing folks and we're going to be going down in the stock market for some of the reasons that we've discussed here which are divergences etc 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 but but last night uh, when the the um, the s p was trading it had a uh, a really nice expansion to those of you that were watching, and I know some of you were, had a really nice expansion to the downside on a 1.618 relationship, and it made it uh, uh, real interesting to see that it was exactly at that same price. Because that's the minimum uh, minimum retracement, folks, because it's taken it's taken five days to get here, and uh, as long as we if we can, if we can go above 2,900 now, uh, we're going to be looking at a market that could go you know, a whole lot higher. That's the main thing. Now, something else happened last night that was very interesting, and that was in the old crude oil. If you remember here, we've been watching crude oil for quite some time, and if we take a look at it, here's where we were as of Monday. I just want to give you an idea because Ruby was on top of this last night. I lost as much sleep as you did, my dear, but uh, it was well worth it. Anyway, you'll notice that 61% retracement that's sitting there, and what happened in the crude, let's just get up here so we can take a quick look at it. We'll update it so you'll be able to see it. We had a 2.5% move in crude oil last night as we matched the bottom of the last. We've hit it three times. We hit it last week, and then we hit it twice this week. So that that level at 50, 70, boy, you can you can uh, put, put a circle on that puppy because uh, if we get below that, you know, uh, crude oil is heading down. But anyway, right now it's looking pretty good. We had a pretty nice run in it overnight, and we're going to be able to see if it's working here. Um, uh, folks are talking about the the moving the 200-day exponential moving average. Folks, some people, the, the reason why exponential moving averages work, I believe, is because a lot of people use them. I mean, they're lagging indicators, but people that know how to use them, uh, and I'm talking about people here at TFNN like Basil and and um, Steve Rhodes and David and also Tom O'Brien. I'm not an oscillator person. I'm just a bar chart person. I, I try to keep it as simple as possible and within my pay grade, which is quite low. On a civil servant, 18 being the highest, I'm about a number three, but uh, I get by. That's what I can tell you is I do get by, but not as good as sometimes I'd like, but it's still okay. All right, we'll be right back and we'll talk a tiny bit about natural gas and then we'll have Tim Bost on. The Taz Profile Scanner is the most revolutionary piece of trading software that you will ever try. Wouldn't you like to approach the markets with confidence? As you begin your trading day, it's likely that you'll be faced with lots of decisions. In order to make the best decision, the first thing you'll need is a strategy that will help you minimize your risks. Whether we're in a bull or bear market, a good strategy is to have the tools needed to help you scan and analyze the markets before you trade. 
The TAS Profile Scanner instantly scans and filters over 2,500 global financial markets, such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. Headed by Steve Dahl, president of TAS Market Profile, the TAS Profile Scanner understands that in today's technological world, the use of top-flight software applications, automated trading algorithms, and technical analysis expertise is essential to successful trading in today's market. Whether you're looking at the trade matrix, the ETF heat grid, the market breadth, the landscape charts, or the many other features of the TAS Profile Scanner, this is a piece of software that will revolutionize how you look at the markets and set up your trades. The team at TAS has even put together a 12-part video series to walk you through every aspect of the TAS Profile Scanner, which you can find directly on the TAS order page at TFNN.com. Sign up now for only $97 a month with a risk-free 30-day trial so you have nothing to lose and everything to gain. See for yourself how you can harness the full power of the TAS Profile Scanner by visiting the front page of TFNN.com today and you'll find the TAS Profile Scanner under the Services section. Remember, with a 30-day money-back guarantee, you have nothing to lose. Don't let another day pass you by without trying out this amazing piece of software that will revolutionize how you look at the market and how you place trades. Sign up today. Steve Dahl and Tom O'Brien have just announced a special webinar on June 19th for all subscribers to the TAS Profile Scanner. Steve and Tom will break down the trade matrix, market breadth, heat grid, as well as the three-step process you can use with the TAS Profile Scanner to identify market movers and how to capitalize on that move. For all the details and to get started with the TAS Profile Scanner today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. With a 30-day money-back guarantee, you have nothing to risk. Go sign up today. TFNN has launched our brand new website. You can still visit us at the same TFNN.com URL, but when you do, you'll see a new and improved homepage with a much simpler navigation, whether you're watching Tiger TV live in high definition or just accessing your newsletter subscriptions. We even have new pricing in six months and yearly options. Check out the new TFNN.com now and experience all the upgrades. TFNN.com, educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Okay, folks, let's take a look here at natural gas for peak D. We want to take a look at it because we've made a 1.618 expansion, and we've got a quiet little upside and downside. This is the lowest risk you're going to get for natural gas if you want to buy it because, uh, you know, it is, uh, it's got a chance here to hold. And the reason is because of that 1.618 expansion number. You know, that's the real key that I'm looking at. Folks, uh, when when we talk about Elliott Wave, I really believe that Elliott brought a whole lot to the Elliott Wave stuff. I just have a trouble doing the counting. That That's not his problem. It's mine. You know, so I, I just I just have find it very, very difficult. But, boy, he certainly did bring us a great deal. He was the first one to introduce the F word, Fibonacci. You know, that was back in 1938. And so very, people, very few people knew anything about it. It wasn't until Robert Frost got in it just with his little protege Robert Prechter, and then they made it uh, made it started to get it famous there in the late 70s, uh, early 80s. So uh, it's definitely got some great stuff. I I do believe that they missed a few things, but you know you you're not going to get anybody from Terre Haute, Indiana, to challenge anybody from Yale and Harvard and any of those other places. Let me tell you. It's uh, not going to happen. Nebahachi, as they say in the trade. All right, we want to talk a, a tiny bit more. Uh, about the soybeans because we've had a heck of a run here. I just wanted to show you uh, we had this big run in corn, and if we look at the if we look at the soybeans here, uh, we also had a 382 retracement there. We were looking for them to come down to the 61 percent retracement, but they've already started to uh, you know to start to move higher. Now they haven't gone uh, nearly as high as the corn yet, but all of these are starting to move. You had a 20 cent move in uh, beans yesterday. That's a lot of money. And the corn was not as much, but the corn's been the leader of the pack. So there's problems out there in the Midwest, folks, and they're continuing to get worse. The problem is that they're losing time. You know, we're in the middle of uh, 
we're in the middle of June now, and there's a lot of corn that's never going to get planted. They're talking about a, a 1.66, or you know, no, 166 uh, bushels per uh, uh, bushels per acre. But if we get that corn on a cob, it's going to be like prime rib. It's going to be uh, pretty, pretty expensive. So it doesn't look good, and it could get a whole lot worse. And then what will happen is as we come into the uh, harvesting season, it's probably going to be cold and wet, and they're not going to get what little crop they have out of there. So you got to watch this. Uh, I'm not too sure about the weather market part, but watch the charts because if you get these explosive moves, I think they'll be, uh, you know, relatively, uh, you know, important. I've been asked to take a look at the old silent car itself, Tesla, and we're going to take a look at this now so that you folks can get an idea. It's a very, very tradable stock, and it's it's got a lot of uh, lot of action going on in it. So let's get it uh, up here so we can see it. Boy, don't tell me I'm getting. Ah, no, we're okay. Here we go. Here's start off with the weekly. Here we are in the weekly chart of Tesla. You'll see that uh, we've had a massive uh, double top up there. It's the ideal double top, too, folks, because it goes up and takes out the previous buy by like a half a buck at 388 bucks, and then just rolls over. Uh, we made the big uh, Gartley down here at the 78% retracement. It's pretty much where we're setting right now. Uh, and so we want to be uh, – look. don't forget this thing went from 15 bucks a share for 390 so it's a pretty – yeah, pretty much a high flyer, but the real important part of this chart is if we take a look at Tesla here uh, on the uh, on the daily. This is uh, this is really you could teach a whole class on technical analysis and pattern recognition here with Tesla. Let's just look at the uh, the first Gartley that we had way back in January of last year when it was trading at 340, uh, made a double top in. January, another one in February, broke all the way down to 240, 100 bucks a share, goes up and makes a new high. You can see the multiple ABCD patterns that are there from March to May and May to July. And then you have the double top that occurred between August and also in November. And at that one, you can see that you had the three drive to a top pattern that we like to see because that gives you so many ratios and patterns to fit together uh, at the same time. And that's the real, the real beautiful, beautiful part of it. Then starting in Jan late December of last year, the market broke really hard. After that, it made a very nice ABCD pattern into January. And as you can see the cycle lows, how they were coming in at lower levels, you can see them. There were 14 day cycles, very similar to you know, the lunar cycle that we're looking at, and it goes lower, lower, downtrend in force, the 135 pattern. That sets up the ABCD structure that takes you down to, you know where, 209. Of course, we went all the way down to 179, and then we had a pretty good bounce. And yesterday's bounce was very, very important, folks. And the reason why is if you look at this really closely, and I know you will, I know you will. If you look at the high, the equal rally that we had back in April was an equal rally to what we had yesterday. If you measured those ratios, you'll see that the one from that high was exactly 382. And if you take the intermediate high, that takes you to your 61% level. And then if you take a little bit of imagination, folks, and here's where it gets difficult. You've got to do the work yourself. Look at the low in March. At 260, the market rallies up. It makes another low at 250 or 230, rallies up, and then goes down to, you'll never guess, 180. The low was 179. That was a three drive to a bottom pattern. And now we are at the proverbial moment of truth in Tesla. Tesla must get above 230 to remain its bullishness. Otherwise, it's got 175 to 165 written all over it without any trouble at all. It really does. So this is how you learn to look at a chart, draw in the patterns. Uh, I know when you first start doing it, it'll look a little confusing, but all you have to do is remember two things right out of Dr. Andrew Lowe's book. Markets repeat over and over again, and this repetition is predictable within limits. And that's why the markets are chaotic, but within the chaos, are these random patterns that repeat over and over again, starting, of course, with the most important one out of H.M. Gartley's book on page 249, AB equals CD, also known as the Thunderbolt. From that, all other patterns stretch out because that's all the market is ever doing, folks. It's either going up 
down or sideways. And looking at pattern recognition, you're trying to find out what in the world is it doing now. Sometimes it's a lot easier than it is at other times, but that's uh, that's neither here nor there. We've only got another minute before we have our guest on today, which is always fun, and he had some great information uh, um, to pay to take a look at it. But let's. Uh, I need to check to see what the live markets are doing, folks, just to see where we are here. It's important that the S&P, if it's bullish, it needs to get above 2,900 today. Um, the gold needs to get above uh, 1,345 if it's going to remain bullish. Uh, the euro is, is starting to have trouble, folks. It's already broken, you know, uh, one full harmonic down in the euro now, down about 80 pips from the high. So that's another one. So that, that level that we had in that U.S., dollar that we talked about in the newsletter last week was so very, very important. And thus far, it has not broken that. I mean, it's went down here and tested it three days in a row. And now the U.S. dollar is starting to get a little bit of a bounce in here. So it's still got a chance, you know, to make that level up into here. So that's a, a key thing to look at. 877-927-6648. Larry Pesavento has just started his brand new service, Fibonacci 24-7, and he's already delivering content to his subscribers on a daily basis when the market's opened and even on weekends. Each Monday, you'll receive Larry's written report that provides detailed commentary and a summary on the charts and videos that Larry sends out. And throughout the week, when warranted, Larry will send out via charts or videos or both the key markets that he is watching during the day. This will be up-to-the-date, active trading information that will help you in your daily trading. In Larry's first week alone, he sent out 25 charts, six videos, and a full report to his subscribers in just one week. If you're a technical trader that uses patterns and retracements to trade, then Larry's service Fibonacci 24-7 is something that you must try. Right now, new subscribers can get a full 30-day money-back guarantee. With nothing to risk, sign up now to Larry Pesavento's Fibonacci 24-7 by visiting the front page of TFNN.com under Trading Newsletters. The Path of Least Resistance is David White's daily trading newsletter, and if you're looking for active trading ideas, then now is a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service. David uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his Path of Least Resistance newsletter. Using a combination of equity trades along with options, David keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted. Don't miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find The Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details, and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN.com now. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com.
Okay, folks, we're online with Tim Bost out of uh, Sarasota, Florida, Financial Cycles Weekly. Tim, we had one of your biggest fans on yesterday, Arch Crawford. Oh, and, uh, wonderful. Yeah, he said to <laughs> say a, hi to he's you. He's a dear friend. He really is. Yeah, he sure is. <laughs> he's a nice guy. Anyway, uh, Arch and I, you know, we're neighbors here in Tucson, and one of the things that uh, Arch was talking to me about off air was, you know, he's got this uh, really big forecast for something really negative happening in the third week of June. And his, you know, some of the, the forecasts that he's made, and he's really adamant about it. I mean, he, he features it, number one, in his newsletter, like, get ready, hang on, you know, do all that stuff. And, you know, some of the ones he's had has been, you know, Chernobyl and, uh, you know, the, the Hassan Hussein and Princess Di. I mean, some of them have been really amazing. Now, he's had others like Y2K. Which uh, you know didn't happen at all. I have to. T I, I don't want to take any of your time. But in Y two K, Mark Douglas had just moved here in 1996, and we would uh -huh. go to these gun shows every weekend. And uh, Arch was stocking up with ammo and and dried food. So he had these three. He had these three big trolleys, and he asked us to go to the to the show with him to get uh, two years worth of uh, food because he really thought the whole thing was going to shut down. So we we went ahead and went to the show with him. He took us along. And we got this uh, about fifteen hundred dollars worth of food. Maybe it's a little more than that, but on these trolleys, <laughs> it was about four hundred and fifty pounds. And we we packed it into a van that he had uh, uh, that he, he had uh, rented. And, uh, and then three years later, <laughs> he gave all the food, of course, to the <laughs> to the uh, uh, which I think he gave it to the. Uh, the gospel mission, I believe, it was still under. Uh, okay. it, yeah, but because it was running out, but they they took care of it. But anyway, he was he was wrong about that one. What, do you well, see anything? At, why UK gave there? us lots of entertainment value anyway? It was it was oh, lots boy. of fun, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, indeed it did. Do you see anything like that? Uh, yeah, that you're you know because you know there's, there's sometimes it's chocolate cake, sometimes it's white cake. Do you see anything around the the third week of June that could cause we, a problem? Yeah, we, we do have kind of a, a an intense configuration coming up uh, with a Mars uh, Pluto opposition. Uh, that kicks in late in the day on the 19th of uh, of, of June, and that's followed, uh, you know, uh, immediately by the uh, uh, the summer solstice. So that's a pretty intense uh, 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 potential inflection point uh, there. I'm not necessarily looking for the bottom to fall out, uh, but, but I am I'm looking for some price consolidation following that period. Do you think there'll be some financial uh, or some, you know, some uh, territorial wars or conflicts during that time also? Or? Well, certainly, Mars, you know, the Mars, Mars, Mars Pluto dynamic yeah, okay. uh, can, can provoke that. Uh, you know, Pluto is about power struggle. Mars is about uh, action, especially military action. Uh, but we have to remember that with these Mars cycles, we get them uh, once every two years. So, uh, you know, it's, it's, this is not, uh, you know, a, a once in a century kind of event. Uh, of course, we get conflicts pretty frequently too. <laughs> so, it's certainly within within the uh, uh, reasonable expectation there. Right there, hello. Can you hear me? Hello, hello. This, are you there, Tim? I'm, not, I'm here, yes. Hello. Yeah, I'm far, we, we, uh, we lost internet out here in the desert, so. Um, oh, okay, good. Go ahead. You, you were saying well, about the Mars. It's still working here in Florida, as far as I can tell. It's hard to tell these days with the internet, right? No, uh, <laughs> again, with this uh, Mars Pluto opposition coming up uh, in a couple of weeks here, uh, we, we do have the potential for uh, a price pullback. I'm looking more for a consolidation pattern uh, rather than an outright uh, crash coming out of that. Okay, Tim, I've always felt, and this is on my bucket list, that someday in the near future, there's going to be a segment on CNBC and Bloomberg about financial astrology. Do you, do you feel that could happen someday? Well, if they invite me, we'd be glad to make it happen. <laughs> <laughs> Put in a plug. <laughs> I, I, oh, I used to I used to be on TFNN, and when CNB first uh, started back in, uh, 20 years ago, I was on quite a few times with uh, Ron and Sana and uh, Bill Griffith and Sue Herrera because they were old friends from California. But I mean a real one, like from you know MIT or Harvard or someplace like this, where it says, "Look at the statistics behind this." Because 
is, my gosh, I look at some of these things that they don't work all the time, but my gosh, they, they work a lot of the time, and I think We've it's got worthy a of a decent track record with it. So I, I, it keeps me, yeah. out, it gets me out of bed every morning. <laughs> That's yeah. for sure. <laughs> and not only that, but you're you're in that you're in the list of the top ten and the Timer Digest all the times, so, and and right. so it so is uh, Bill Meridian, and so is uh, Steve Rhodes, and so is Carrie Szymanski, and uh, one other astrology. What Barry? What's his name? Barry uh, Barry, oh, Barry Rosen. Rosen. Yeah. Yeah, he's very, very good too. Right. Uh, yeah. So out of the twenty, I think there were five astrologers in that group. That should be something, I think. Yeah, you know? they need to put a little star by our names in in uh, Timer Digest so people can recognize that. <laughs> that would be a good idea. <laughs> <laughs> be good. Okay, what do you what do you see right now that's really interesting? Well, what we've got coming up uh, tomorrow, in fact, uh, is a kind of a minor inflection point uh, that's a precursor to this uh, Mars uh, Pluto opposition we're looking at. At, uh, on the 19th. Uh, tomorrow, uh, we've got a Mars-Saturn opposition. Uh, and uh, as you recall, back in May, we were projecting forward using uh, primarily the trans-Neptunian stations and the Mars uh, second harmonic dynamics. And, and this is an important one here uh, occurring tomorrow uh, with uh, the, the Mars-Saturn uh, cycle. What we're dealing with is essentially a two-year uh, a cycle pattern uh, with uh, Mars and uh, Saturn. Uh, the last time we had this opposition was on May 29th in 2017. Uh, we've got it coming up again tomorrow. The next time after that will be July the 1st in 2021. So about every two years, uh, you know, plus a couple of weeks, uh, we, we get this uh, uh, configuration. And uh, this is all about uh, action, which is Mars. We were talking about that a moment ago in terms of the uh, proclivity for uh, creating uh, conflict and uh, sometimes uh, geopolitical events, uh, warfare, things of that sort. Uh, but Saturn is all about limits and consolidation. So we've got two contrasting forces at work here. Uh, you know, will the market consolidate or will we be able uh, to break out to, to new highs uh, from where we are right now? And so this is kind of a testing point uh, associated uh, with that. Essentially, what we're looking for coming out of this is some short-term bullishness. And by short-term, I mean about a week uh, coming out of this. Uh, and then followed by some consolidation uh, uh, after that as we get into this uh, Mars-Pluto configuration uh, and the, uh, the uh, summer solstice uh, that I believe Arch was referring to uh, with, with his work. Uh, when the uh, summer solstice, that's on the, the 21st of July, isn't it? No, of June. Uh, June, oh, yeah, June 20. Yeah. Oh, gee, let's try it again. Yeah, okay. Yeah. So that, that'll, <laughs> right. be, that'll, that'll be pretty big because that's one of the things that's uh, uh, the ancients used to use, those solstice and equinoxes very, very uh, extensively. Right, and, and of course, there. W.D. Gann paid a lot of attention to those cardinal points uh, in, in the year, the beginning of spring, summer, uh, winter, fall, uh, when, whenever the sun moves past those cardinal points in the zodiac. Very, very intense times for the markets in general. Uh, you know, most of the cases, based on that alone, we look for a major inflection point, and then we see other factors combining with it, then it intensifies the picture. Okay, that sounds great. Uh, any other thing that really looks exciting coming up uh, in the next week or two? Well, I've been tracking Bitcoin, and that's uh, always uh, you know worth uh, some excitement along the way. Uh, and uh, you know, certainly with the the, the recent uh, uh, rally in there, we've, we've been paying uh, more attention Tim, to it. Tim, take a minute here for a break, and then will you be right back with us, please? There's a couple of questions that people are asking us, and we'll talk about Bitcoin. Tim Boss, Financial sure. Cycles Weekly. We'll be right back. 877-927-6648. If you're in the CD market and looking for a secure investment, the Tiger First Mortgage Program may work for you. The security for these first mortgages are building lots in the Tax Opportunity Zone in St. Petersburg, Florida. The Tax Act of 2018 set up tax-free zones across the country where you can build and hold for 10 years and pay no tax on the profits, which makes these lots valuable. The investment is anywhere from $30,000 to $75,000. The interest paid is 7% yearly paid on a monthly basis. According to Bankrate.com, the best rate for a four-year CD in the country as of February 20th is 3.1%. A $50,000 investment at a normal four-year CD rate of 3.1% would give you income of $1,550 per year or $6,200 over the four-year period. 
That same $50,000 investment in the Tiger First Mortgage Program would give you $3,500 per year or $14,000 over the four years. Which would you prefer, $6,200 or $14,000 of interest on your investment? If you would like more information about the Tiger First Mortgage Program, you can call me at 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. It's amazing to think that Tom O'Brien started his weekly gold report 17 years ago with the first issue published April 7th, 2002, when gold was trading at under $300 per ounce. Gold peaked at more than $1,900 in 2011, and after spending many years consolidating at lower prices, gold may be poised for its next big run. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, South African RAND, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. As of April 1st of this year, the Gold Report currently has eight active positions with an average unrealized profit of almost 8% for each open trade. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your Gold Report subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. Don't let gold's next big run pass you by. Sign up today. Will the S&P 500 continue to climb? For bold trades on U.S. large cap stocks in either direction, trade SPXL, SPUU, or SPXS. Direction's daily S&P 500 bull and bear leveraged ETFs. Direction leveraged ETFs. An investor should carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risks, charges, and expenses before investing. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a fund's prospectus and summary prospectus, call 866-476-7523 or visit directioninvestments.com. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. The Bull Bear Binary Option Hour, next on TFNN. Okay, we're back, folks. We're talking with Tim Boss, Financial Cycles Weekly. Tim, uh, we're talking about the cryptocurrency, Bitcoin. Uh, and I have a question. Tim, do you trade these things? I, I, I don't, and I don't know anybody that does, so I'm just curious if you do trade them. I uh, am not an active uh, trader. In full disclosure, I do uh, hold some positions uh, in uh, several of the cryptos, including Bitcoin, Litecoin, and uh, Ether. So I have very, very small well, positions are, so that I can ones. stay informed about what's going on in that world. <laughs> so, uh, uh, well, it's certainly, a, it's certainly a different world than most, that's for sure. Uh, you want to tell us what you're looking at with Bitcoin? Well, once again, I'm looking at these current planetary cycles, uh, in this case, that Mars-Saturn uh, opposition that we've got coming up uh, tomorrow. Uh, and uh, one of the challenges, of course, with uh, Bitcoin is that we have a very short-term trading history. And what we like to do with our studies here uh, in astro trading is uh, do backtesting. Uh, the last time particular planetary configurations occurred, we don't want to see what happened with any given market. And we don't have a lot of trading history with Bitcoin, so we're dealing uh, typically with you know five or six iterations of different cycles and, and whatnot. Uh, but at any rate, with this, uh, what we're anticipating uh, is a little bit of a pullback uh, in Bitcoin prices uh, coming in immediately following uh, this opposition. Uh, and we're looking for a, a retracement back down to uh, about the 6850 level, uh, probably by early next week. So a pretty sharp uh, pullback. But then this uh, brings in uh, what I believe is going to be a strong buying opportunity for for a short-term play as well. Uh, once again, we're looking at that potential of that uh, summer solstice uh, Mars-Pluto opposition configuration coming in toward the end of next week uh, as a potential consolidation point. Uh, so what we would be doing there would be uh, uh, taking a long position in Bitcoin at the first of the week uh, and then uh, uh, playing it with a very, very tight stop uh, with the expectation that the trade could run uh, to uh, the 19th of June, maybe even into the following week, about the 24th of June, uh, for a move to the upside. 
side. Uh, so uh, we believe then it will be back to the 78 uh, $7,900 range, about where it is now, uh, uh, by the end of, of, of the following week. So it's an interesting little blip that we're looking at, uh, and it also coincides with the solar cycle uh, that we tracked uh, in our book, uh, Bitcoin Astrology. Uh, that's available on Amazon, and it uh, uh, does a lot of the gives a lot of the background work that we use in analysis of the Bitcoin and cryptocurrency markets uh, using the the astro trading methodologies. Tim, are you of the opinion that it's actually the uh, blockchain technology that's important as opposed to the cryptocurrencies themselves? Do you do you follow that theory that uh, we hear about? Uh, not necessarily. I mean, I believe the blockchain technology is very, very important and has a wide range of applications outside of the cryptocurrency space. Uh, but uh, its key role with cryptocurrencies is providing a, a validation mechanism for transactions. Uh, and I think that's uh, one of the things that makes it uh, uh, quite unique in the fact that it's a public uh, uh, a dynamic there. So the idea of developing private blockchains for specific purposes, uh, I think, is basically bogus. The, the, the strength of the blockchain uh, is uh, you know, multiple copies of the same information that can be verified independently. Uh, and so uh, there, there's a lot of confusion around that. Uh, so I, I, I believe it has a, a lot of strength as far as cryptocurrencies go and, and some positive applications elsewhere. Uh, but uh, it's, it's not that everything's blockchain and, and, and forget the cryptos. Mm -hmm. uh, how do you go about selecting which of the cryptocurrencies that you want to uh, look at? Because there's, I understand there's thousands of them that they. Yeah, we have four or yeah. five thousand, something like that. Oh my <laughs> Most gosh! Of them, uh, oh I select by ignoring. <laughs> um, oh, okay. You know, uh, the, the key thing for me is, is is trading history, and so Bitcoin's been around long enough, and uh, Ether, uh, a few of the others have have established enough trading history that we can begin to track that empirically. Uh, so I'm not uh, just jumping into crypto simply because they're cryptos and there's uh, three or four new ones every day so <laughs> that is, wow. uh, you know. that's real now how do you how the question that uh, someone's asking me how do you select an exchange uh, to buy the the, the cryptocurrencies do you, do you know the process behind that or how did, how did you uh, uh, learn right. to start? Right. Uh, some of these you know, exchanges there, there are, are bogus. Number of you know, exchanges, they... uh, but one of the critical uh, factors that I found, uh, Larry, is uh, in protecting yourself with cryptocurrencies uh, is to keep them off. Of the exchange. In other words, do the transaction, uh, and I like to use a, a physical wallet uh, that is uh, off the exchange. This is where most of the uh, the, the the trouble occurs uh, with bad accounting or, or hacking of of, of uh, exchanges. Uh, and so I use something called a Trezor, which is a, an independent device that stores the data relative to the cryptocurrency, and so uh, that, that that takes it off of the exchange once the trade is is on. Could you explain to the folks what a wallet is? That's sort of like a, from what I understand, it's like if you had a credit card, you have one of these little metallic uh, money clips that keep people from hacking into it. Is that what the wallet is? Well, uh, not quite. Uh, basically, with a wallet, what we're doing is, is storing uh, data. Uh, and that can either be online or offline, and I prefer the offline uh, measure there. Uh, but essentially what cryptocurrency transactions are all about is a long string of uh, numbers and characters that authorize, uh, it's kind of like a, a very, very elaborate password that authorizes the transaction. And there are uh, just three pieces of information that we're concerned about, uh, you know, who's sending the money, how much, and who's receiving it. Uh, and uh, all that's encoded into a, a very long, complicated number uh, and so uh, as we go about storing and transferring cryptocurrencies that becomes a, a, a critical piece of information uh, you don't want to lose that <laughs> and so uh, a wallet is essentially a way of safeguarding those passwords if you will uh, and again it can be done on a website sometimes a website connected with an exchange in my book that's a little bit uh, treacherous so I prefer to keep those passwords store on an independent uh, it's kind of like a USB drive uh, uh, sort of gizmo well, you know, Tim, uh, I've known three people that have been involved in Bitcoin. Uh, one of the guys is a reporter over in London, uh, mm -hmm. and then there was one of my students from um, Kiev, uh, excuse me, from Sofia, Bulgaria, mm -hmm. uh, was uh, there. He actually worked for Google for six months in cryptocurrencies, and he realized that he didn't need Google. <laughs> and he went out. He went out on his own, and gosh, he made he made a massive fortune. 
And of course, you know, when stuff goes from a buck or two bucks to 19,000, it doesn't take much to, you know, to make that kind of money. But, you know, it doesn't appear like it's the typical bubble that people uh, originally talked about because it went to 19,000 down to 3,000 and, you know, bounced up to almost 9,000. So that's not how bubbles act. They go to zero. Exactly. And, right. You know, and so, uh, it's, uh, so we're seeing a more mature market now, and, and that's what interests me and, and learning how it actually behaves. We're still early in the game there, uh, but I believe it's worth, uh, worth tracking as we move ahead. Hey, tell us more about your astrology book on Bitcoin. I know it's pretty popular, but tell us about it. Uh, Bitcoin astrology is actually a compilation of articles on uh, astrological dynamics uh, using uh, Bitcoin. I edited the book and contributed uh, a couple of the chapters uh, to it. Uh, Bill Meridian, our good friend, also contributed uh, some to it. Christine Skinner, a well-known uh, astrologer from the UK, as well as Wendy Stacy, also from the UK, uh, contributed their perspectives astrologically. Uh, and then there's a fellow uh, who works with uh, FX Street in uh, Barcelona uh, and uh, he's uh, Gonzalo Moreira. He's one of my students and did some uh, brilliant technical analysis that's included uh, in that uh, volume as well. Uh, the title is Bitcoin Astrology. It's available on Amazon. And uh, uh, I recommend it. Uh, you know, it, it was, it's still preliminary in terms of the research in this area, but we try to define what the parameters are and give some ideas of what we've observed with trading cycles with Bitcoin. Uh, it also includes uh, over 50 separate uh, horoscope charts relative to the history of Bitcoin. Okay. Uh, for those that are into the, that kind of analysis, it's a, it's a great resource guide. Okay, well. stay with us. We'll be right back with Tim Bost. I'm certain you are or strive to be one of the best of the best at everything you do in life. It's the most common trait that we tigers and tigresses share. If you're looking to become the best of the best when it comes to managing your money, let me teach you to do what most wealth managers tell you can't be done, which is how to time the markets. I'm Steve Rhodes, author of Mastering Probability, and for the last 12 months, Timer Digest has been tracking my newsletter signals, which have earned me the ranking as their number one market timer in the nation for the S&P 500 for the last 12 12, 6, and 3 months. Timer Digest also ranks me as the number one market timer for gold as well. The fact is, markets can be timed, and I'll teach you the exact set of tools that I use that has transformed me into one of the best at what I do. Sign up for Mastering Probability today by clicking on the newsletter tab on the homepage of tfnn.com and get immediate access to workshops where I take you step by step how to use an extraordinary set of tools as well as provide great market calls too. Sign up today. If you haven't checked out the newsletters page of TFNN.com, what are you waiting for? All of the TFNN newsletters are informative, up-to-date, affordable, and a must-have for every trader looking to gain a competitive informational edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets to offer you the very latest in market news. Plus, new subscribers get to test drive our newsletters risk-free for 30 days. From all aspects of the markets, including stocks, bonds, metals, commodities, and tech, there's a newsletter to fit your needs exclusively from TFNN. Stay informed each day you trade and get that competitive edge that will help you stay ahead of the game. Visit our newsletters page by going to TFNN.com and click the newsletters button near the top of the page. TFNN.com, educating investors. Since 1984, Basil Chapman has been using the Chapman Wave methodology to advise traders of his expert market opinion. While originally hand-drawing charts from the late 1970s into the 1980s, Basil noticed that prices under most circumstances virtually always had a certain number of legs to the upside before declining sharply. Later, Basil found that computer software, which included the standard market technical indicators, enhanced the degree of accuracy in calling price turns, as well as market trend calls. Thus was born the Chapman Wave sequence. Using the Chapman Wave methodology along with other indicators, Basil Chapman advises his subscribers of his expert market opinion each market day with his opening call newsletter. Right now, you can get a two-week free trial to the opening call, Basil's daily trading newsletter, by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during that trial and pay absolutely nothing. Get your two-week free trial to Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com.
Okay, we're back, folks, talking with Tim Boss, Financial Cycles Weekly. Tim, tell the folks how they can reach you and how they get your book on Amazon and uh, some other information you might want to share okay, with us. Okay, good. Yeah, we, we've got a couple of books to refer to on Amazon. One is called Bitcoin Astrology. That's the one we were just talking about. Just go to Amazon.com, uh, look that up. Uh, my name is Tim Bost, B-O-S-T. Uh, and then also uh, take a look at uh, Mercury Money and the Markets, uh, another book that's available on Amazon uh, that describes uh, short-term uh, trading strategies with uh, uh, astro trading methodologies. Uh, it's a pretty good reference uh, to some of the, the methodologies and techniques that we use across the board, so I'd recommend those highly. Our flagship website is financialcyclesweekly.com. Uh, we have a number of subscription services there. We're also doing a special webinar, and you can reach uh, that at uh, bit.ly slash astro now, and that's lowercase a-s-t-r-o, capital N, capital O, capital W, uh, B-I-T dot L-Y slash A-S-T-R-O, capital N-O-W. Uh, we'll get you to the registration page for our webinar. We're doing that a couple times, one uh, later today and another one uh, this weekend, so you can pick the time that works best for you. We're going to take a, a, a little time then to explore what's working now in astro trading and answer questions directly during those sessions. So uh, if you want to uh, get engaged with uh, figuring out how, uh, more about how this stuff works, we'd be delighted to have your company on one of those sessions. Uh, Tim, what's the charge of those at that webinar? Uh, that one would be absolutely free. So, is there a uh, money back guarantee on that? <laughs> yeah, we get double your money back on that one. <laughs> <laughs> hey, listen, uh, thanks for joining us, my friend, and I'm sure some folks will definitely lock in because we are interested in learning more about the financial astrology and. You've certainly helped us a lot here. So, again, thank you again. We'll have you on maybe next month when we get closer to some of these big things that are happening. And Excellent. If, it's if always a alive, pleasure, Larry. Delightful oh. to spend some time with you this morning. Well, I always like seeing you, too. You're a real man among men. We appreciate it, my friend. <laughs> Thanks. Okay, have a great day. You bet. You bet, folks. That was Tim Boss, Financial Cycles Weekly.